Hey, good evening. Welcome to the Below the Skirt with Tamara. I am Tamara Green, Pelvic Rehab Therapist, helping you live your best life below the skirt. How are you doing this evening? Hope all is well. I, and you may have noticed what the title said. The title said, Myths About Getting Older. What are the myths about getting older? Can you think of some things where you said, you know, hey, when I got old, when, when, we, when you get older, if you've heard other women say, these are things you should be looking forward to when you get older. Can you think of a couple? So I'm going to give a couple that I've heard, and I would love for you to tune in and drop in some myths that you may have heard. So one, and this may be silly, but this stuff is real. We need to talk about it. When, when I get older, or when you get older, you are too old to have sex. Is that true? The answer is no, you're not too old to have sex. If you can, if you're physically able to have sex, then just because you're older does not mean you're dead. That's what I hear a lot, especially from my men. But in general, you, we still are alive. We still should be able to enjoy in intercourse. Hello. Hey, Lavonda Lynn, how are you doing? So are you too old? When you get old, can you have sex? Yes, you still can have sex. If you're physically able to do it, there's nothing wrong. It's good for the body in general. So first of all, you can't have sex when you get older. So don't let somebody tell, tell you that you can't. Secondly, you may say, well, when I get older, that's going to be me. Have you ever been someplace and somebody's laughed out loud? And this may have happened to you as well. You've laughed out loud and it's typically older. You see it with older people. They'll laugh out loud and they will just, they'll have a fart. They'll pass gas. Have you seen that? Have you heard it? Have you done it? I know I have. But you see it a lot more with older people. And I know specifically when I used to work in the nursing home, I mean, they would literally be passing gas all the time. So if I accidentally had one slide out, hey, they didn't know if it was me or if it was the client, right, at the nursing home. So a combination to as that is why someone may be passing gas It's very common Especially if you have a weak pelvic floor, you'll laugh, just like you'll leak urine. It's the same thing. Some gas will pass through as well, unwanted gas. So if you are able to have a stronger pelvic floor, those pelvic floor muscles, Virginia, I always have her with me. And let me show you the pelvic floor muscles. If you don't know, they're the muscles that sit here and they house the uterus, bladder, and the rectum. Again, just like the faucet with the pelvic floor, if you're having some leakage, strengthening that pelvic floor, that will definitely help. Same thing from the other end. If that is weak, then it will then allow leakage, if it's fecal or gas, something is going to exit. The question is, do you want it to exit when you want it to exit versus it coming out the other way around? So passing gas is something that as you get older doesn't necessarily have to be the case, but it is common because of a weak pelvic floor. So I wanted to drop that in there with you. And I, I'm going to I'm going through four different things as to what are some myths that you hear that you should be looking forward to when you get older. Can you think of something? I want you to those who are watching drop something in that you have heard when it comes to the below the skirt issues. Thirdly, depends you know you go down the aisle you see your tampons you see your panty liners you see the pads and you see the depends right and then you know they have those depends where they can be pretty they look like um they look like regular panties for the most part more of us a low cut well high thigh how, however it's called but you've definitely, you've, you've seen women who've had the, the depends. So just because you're getting older does not mean you feel like you have to wear 
depends. Depends is it's it's a it's a form of protection that panty liners can't quite um, cover. A general pad cannot quite cover. It's something that will give you because you know you're going to have either a big leakage or you just don't want you just don't trust yourself when it comes to it. So that's where the depend is. Now, as you get older, if you don't focus, just like we do any other strengthening for any other part of the body, if you don't strengthen a certain area, if you don't use it, what happens? You lose it. Um, if your if a situation comes, you're having prolapse, right? That can cause increased frequency in urination as well, um, causing more at risk of you having leakage. So, to answer the question, when you get older, yeah, me and my girlfriend, we're not going to be wearing Victoria's Secrets anymore. <laughs> we're going to be wearing the pins. That does not have to be the case. That's where pelvic therapy can help now if you're noticing some of those symptoms as we speak. Fourthly, you may say, well, I won't be able to do certain things I would like to because I'm not flexible. Or... You may see someone dancing, they're salsa dancing, moving those hips or doing whatever dance people enjoy doing. Or you may see a woman watch um, on a show, she's doing a stretch, doing a certain move. You know, I've been places and I'm like, I'm 38 years old and I'll go somewhere and I'll see a young girl doing something I'm like, oh, that would break my body, right? Well... If you work on stretching your body, for me, I like to do yoga. Those stretches have definitely allowed flexibility in my life that has allowed it to carry over in all aspects of my life, just from everyday activities, less pain, less back pain, but also into my bedroom. It's definitely spiced it up a whole lot. So sometimes I feel like I can do something like an 18-year-old, really when I'm 38. So, but... My point is, you may say, I can't do certain things that I would like to do because I'm getting older and I'm too stiff. Well, you can you can fix that. There was a lady in the yoga class that I was in, right? And I had just started yoga early this year. And when I was there, and I was doing some stretches, and I caught, caught myself looking up at her. I was like, dang, can I be like her when I get older? My point to you is, you... It's there if you're willing to work for it. You don't have to settle for what the myths are. Like when you get older, you, sh you can't do this. You, sh you may not be able to do this. It doesn't have to be that way. So you're definitely able to do different things. Um, Levon Lynn said, I know you said below the skirt, but I hear that my breasts will sag. <laughs> hey, listen. As I say, it's like rocks in the bottom of socks. Rocks in the bottom of socks. I mean, I don't have a whole, I'm not voluptuous, but um, that's, hey, we can't really change that type of stuff. I mean, that's, we really can't change that, but that's something we do here. But there's always avenues that you can do to kind of plump them up. You can get better bras. Um, there's ways to do things, but yeah, that's something we really can't quite help. Somebody else can probably help out with that. I don't have, I don't really know. I don't have a whole lot of them. So um, yoga, it is yes, Tamika. That is right. Yoga definitely helps with stretching. Again, I saw some women in these classes doing some amazing things. And I literally was like, I want to be able to do that. And I set personal goals for myself that I would like to be able to accomplish with my own personal, private life. And there's some goals I'm still working on it. I'm going to have to continue to stretch. But yes, it definitely helps. So I just wanted, I was naming just a couple things. So um, LaVon Ellen, that was good. Rocks at the bottom of socks, droopy breasts. That is, that's a part of it. Um... And there's some other cosmetic things some women may want to do to adjust it. But I'm talking about things that we can control conservatively. Stretching, yoga, depends, the leakage that we're having, even if it's urine or if it's fecal. You know, working on strengthening that pelvic floor so you then don't have the uncontrolled leakage that you're not wanting and not necessarily feeling like you have to go and get those depends that they've had all decorated 
um, to say, hey, it's okay. There's help for that. Also feeling like, hey, when I get older, I don't want to be that woman that I'm passing gas when I laugh, you know, or I bend over and pick something up and you hear a noise come out. It's not the silent one. It's the loud rattling one, right? So that when it comes to having a weak pelvic floor, you will notice you can, you'll have, there's times where you will just pass gas out loud or fart out loud, um, unintentional, or you'll move the wrong way and you'll, you'll have it slide out unintentionally. So working that pelvic floor will also decrease those um, issues. I had a client come in today and she was, she said every time she would laugh, she would fart and she hated it, especially when she was at work, we'll put it like that. And she said, I've noticed since I've been doing my exercises with you, I have not been having unexpected outbursts or embarrassing moments like that. That would make me not even want to laugh. I would just feel like I could just put something in there to plug it up so it won't come out when I'm not ready for it to come out. Um, so that's, an, that's another thing um, as well question are we too old to have sex no you're not too old to have sex if you're alive and you can physically get into certain positions and certain positions don't have to be that technical then hey if you're able to do what you do do what you do you're not too old to have sex um it's surprising my older clients have been you know listen I, I want to be like this when I get older. When they they have no shame, they've lived their life, they're not bashful about anything, they just let it rip and let you know how it is. And they, they, they've said, hey, they they doing their thing in the 70s and, and I'm just like, wow, we still do that? Yes, they do. And that's a goal for myself to be able to still be able to enjoy my sexual health. So just because you're older does not mean you're dead and that does allow leeway for you to still be able to engage in sexual health. Leslie, hey Nia, Leslie was saying, I've heard once you go through menopause, your Virginia gets dry, your, your Virginia, ooh, hold on, your Virginia gets dry and sex is painful. Although they do, ooh, different people putting stuff, excuse me. I've heard once you go through menopause, your Virginia gets dry and sex is painful. Although they do make products that that can help to make this not happen. Well, right. So as you're as you're getting older, um, the estrogen levels change. And I did a I did a previous post on a live on that the difference between vaginal dryness and vaginal tightness. But again, if you're assessing your your Virginia, you'll definitely notice like more like lighter spots or very very lighter spots that is a, sh a sign of low estrogen level and that is common okay that is common but there is other avenues you know some people decide they want to um get the hormone replacement and i'm not that's not my area of expertise i just know what i'm looking for and just say hey you need to speak with your obg why in about it um, there's other things that people utilize when it comes to herbal supplements. So yes, it, sorry about the lighting. I'm working on this y'all. Um, but yeah, so to answer your question, yes, that is a common factor that you may have. Always look at what your, your intake is when it comes to your dieting, um, making sure you're, you're definitely checking out what your hormonal levels are. And if, you decide, hey, I'm not going to necessarily want to take some form of medication or of, of such measures. You know, you can definitely utilize lubrication um, because lubrication um, helps out with the dryness. But naturally, you want to be able to increase your wetness down there. And, uh, and some of that, too, has to also deal with foreplay, you know, um, depending upon what your pleasures are, you know. Some people want it right quick, fast, in a hurry, right? You know, sometimes it takes us a little bit of time to get stimulated. Like some of us are naturally wetter than others, just to answer your question, Leslie. But sometimes it takes a little bit more um, coaxing to get yourself in that, the moment to also help with the dryness. So hopefully that helps out. As, hopes, hopefully, hopefully I answered your question. Um, and then, oh, good news. Yep, thanks, Nia. Hopefully it's good for y'all. Um, Jackie put, I'm, I'm trying to get there. 
hey, you keep doing what you do, Jackie, and you'll be exactly where you would like to be. All right. So um, any other myths y'all heard of the as when you get older? And some of the myths are not necessarily myths. Some of them really are actually true. But the point is there is help for it. So you don't necessarily have to feel like you have to be stay at that component. Right. Um, so that's the biggest thing that I those are the four myths that I have heard or I've seen or, you know, sometimes you go to like a birthday party and say somebody's getting older and then they'll have these like jokes. And the, the jokes that I always hear is about the depends and is about the painful, not painful sex, about being too old to have sex and then also the unwanted passing of gas. Those are the things that I've heard of. So. So if y'all, I'm going to wait a couple seconds. I know I'm kind of ahead of y'all. Um, but, you know, I definitely try to make these lives not, I want to make them not necessarily always so structured. I always put an educational spin onto everything that I'm giving it to you, giving you, even if it's from a, a psychological component or from a emotional standpoint, from a physical standpoint. So I try to touch on all of them, um, but I just definitely try not to make, always make the lives so structured in a class setting. So definitely try to open it up to bring a little laughter to it. Um, any case study myths? I'm trying to think I'm, I'm not quite sure if I understand your question. They also say libido changes after menopause. Right. So you have to realize the, the hormone. So what the, the question is, and I'm not an expert with when it comes to that as a sex therapist, maybe more, or like I said, OBGY, and I'm giving it from a pelvic rehab. I treat women or men who's because of an issue, I treat the deficits. So like, so libido, like that is pretty much just not having the drive that's needed um, when it, when it comes to wanting to have sex. So, so if you're not sure what libido is, that's just the sex drive. Um, so again, there's different, because there's hormonal changes, right? Then that's, then that may be a component that doesn't happen to everybody, everyone. So that's why it's important to know your levels. And I've known some women who have had issues with libido and they've taken some type of herbal supplement, but they, they had to do their research. Again, you always have to know about yourself. Go get some blood work done. Speak with your provider. See what areas are low versus what are high. Um, and with that being said, they've taken their levels done their own research, and as long as it's medically okay, they've done more herbal. Like for instance, like Lavonda Lynn Sankit, she sells um, the oils, natural oils. Hopefully I'm saying this right, Lavonda Lynn. If not, please correct me. Um, but the, those er, er, herbal, those supplements that sh she uses definitely fills in. There's a shout out to you, you know, um, but at the same time, those um, supplements are used just like if I want to calm myself down, right? Then I may um, do lavender. You know, that definitely suppresses me and gets me calmed down if I'm kind of anxious or whatever I'm feeling. So just realize there's other things out there. I can even just say for myself, like when, like what my menstrual cycles, like I had a tubal ligation. Um, a few years back and I definitely noticed and I know I may be kind of off subject but I'm just telling you there's things to help yourself if you do a little bit of research um, I did um, I've noticed after having my tubal ligation my periods um, my menstrual cycles have been a lot they were a lot heavier um, my menstrual cramps were a lot stronger man I thought I almost was going to the phase one of labor y'all like really and I started doing like herbal teas. I remember one day I literally didn't, I, would, I didn't even realize I was having a period even though I was having my menstrual cycle, but the cramping was not nearly as severe. The flow wasn't not as nearly as strong. So I'm definitely, I believe in um, a, whole, a, a holistic approach. Um, I'm still working my way through just like I'm teaching y'all. I'm still learning every day. But just also realize there's other remedies you can do if you're falling short in other areas. 
Um, just checking. Uh, other miss not mentioned. Yeah, those are just a few that I know that so I was just definitely as we came together, I wanted to see is there some certain things that you heard um, besides the ones that I spoke on. You might have caught it a little bit later. I was just talking about one, you know, when you get older, yep, you're gonna pass gas when you get older, or you know, you you're too old, you can't have sex when you get older. You're definitely gonna end up wearing depends um, because you can't hold your urine or you're just too stiff to have any flexibility to kind of get your groove on or to do whatever you want to do. So those are the four things that I named. So um, to answer your question, Nia. Um, yeah. So yes, Levon Lynn was talking about essential oils, essential oils. Yes. So those are, that's something holistic that you can do to help out. You have to do some research, holistic oils, herbs. Those may be some things, um, Leslie, to answer your question when it comes to or somebody asked about libido. Libido. I'm trying to keep up. Libido. So, libido. So hopefully, I gave you some information. Hopefully, it was a little funny at the same time. But also, too, I gave you some information that you can take home with you and do some research for yourself. Um, but you know, if if you're not having sex now and you are older and it's painful. Right? You know, it's not like you just can't just have, you know, say you say you want to have sex, but you can't have sex because you're older, then there's a problem. Is it because it's too dry or is it too painful? Um, so those are the avenues that you need to then start researching um, along to in reference to getting the help that you need. So it's been good and you know I, i'm really i really enjoy coming to see y'all i just keep saying that every tuesday at eight i look forward to seeing you just giving some knowledge you know collaborating with you speaking with you if there's anything anything that you want to talk about put it in the post side message me but just realize if you have a question everyone else did and i spoke with one of my clients and um She's a part of the group. I always try to bring my clients in just because as a support as well, if they're, you know, if they want to do it. And, you know, her, she mentioned to me, she was like, you know, I would have never felt comfortable to be able to really just have an open conversation with some of my friends or some girls who may get together uh, somewhere. And we're just talking that stuff that we just didn't talk about. And I just realized at that moment when she not I just realized, it was another component, it was another confirmation that, yes, what I'm talking about is uncomfortable, but at the same time, it's so needed. It's so needed. So for her to be able to go and chit chat with some girlfriends about her Virginia and some of the things that they have been dealing with or some things that she may have learned that they're like, oh, we're going to talk about that. But then they started feeling comfortable. That's great. We've got to definitely continue to have these um, public conversations on private matters. That doesn't mean I'm going to go run out and she be like, yeah, we're going to talk about my Virginia or my or my my vagina or my vote no that it's a time and a place for things but let's not never have a conversation about it does that make sense what i'm saying so there is a time and a place for things situation your personal um, your your bedroom life or your below the skirt your bathroom life you know dealing with what you're dealing with but there's nothing wrong about having a conversation right you say oh look at look at look at that makeup girl you, that lipstick that red lipstick is popping or wow you really look good in that dress or you know man that hairstyle really suits you you know and or you may ask your girlfriend, like, you know, hey, should I get this hairstyle or should should this outfit go together? It's the same thing. It's the same thing. So just kind of having that conversation. Um, and I know we're all kind of like social distancing. But at the same time, when we get back to somewhat of a normal, definitely have a girls night. Y'all talk about it. You know, there's this. I don't mind being your special guest and maybe through Zoom. I'm loving this Zoom thing. But I, you know, that would be great to be able to have these conversations because 
it's okay. And you just may not realize just that general conversation on the low, you may be helping heal, heal the next person next to you when you're talking about it. Or you, you may be helping bring them out of something they feel so afraid of, or it's, you know, it's a secret. It's a taboo. They may feel like they're in bondage. They may feel like they're in isolation. They may feel like they're like truly the only one. They may be frustrated with it. They may be embarrassed about it. They may have all these feelings about stuff we just don't talk about. And we have so many support groups. I'm in a support group. It's like this plant-based support group. It's pretty cool, right? So we talk about that. Or we may be the support group where we're mothers. Or maybe a support group where you've recently had a procedure. So you want to be in that support group when it comes to speaking on Say you had a hysterectomy, say you had a, a breast reduction, say you just got a new, I just got my new locks, I'm loving them, I'm in the, a group for that. Like you just want support of whatever you may be possibly dealing with within your life, good or bad. You want support. And that's the same thing that this group is for. That's the same thing that you can also be a part of when you're with, whoop, my light fell down when the time is running out, huh? It's amazing how things happen. <laughs> so, so what I was trying to say, this light is bright. Hey, that's what happened with Facebook Live. You got to be ready. Anything can happen. So, what I was just trying to say was like with your girlfriends, be a support network for one another. Um, if you haven't gone through it, then you may be, somebody else has already gone through it. Or, Somebody may be preparing to go through it. So just realize, be a support network with your sisters, with your friends, with your church buddies, with your relatives. Like I said, there's a time and a place for it. But I challenge you. I dare you to have a conversation. I dare you to have a conversation about it. Can I tell you how to come bring up a conversation? I don't. I don't know how to tell you that. Like me, I'll just say it because this is what I do. People know what I do. But I challenge you to bring up a conversation. It's like, you know, hey, I heard, or you can use this, this live as an example, right? You can just say, hey, when you get older, what are some, let me put this up. Y'all don't laugh. My top is dressed up. But if y'all saw what my bottom was, y'all would really laugh. <laughs> so I'm not going to stand up. But um, I like use this, use this example of what I said. And say, hey, when you get older, girl, you know, talking to whoever you're speaking with, when you get older, what are some things that you you could expect when you get older? Or you're you're afraid of that a woman may go through. And say, hey, throw all the different ideas. And it could be something, I would start off with a farm one. That is just that's gonna make you laugh. If I get if I'm on the phone with you and I said, Hey, when you get older, are we gonna be farting? The first thing you're gonna do is you're going to laugh right? You're going to laugh. So those are definitely conversations that you can have. And then that starts taking you to maybe some other little areas. Not as you may not want to get butt so personal, but those are conversations. And then you can stop, start talking about it. Invite them to the group. This is where we, you know, hang out every Tuesday at eight. Um, so Lavonda Lynn says, I want to teach a class in the spring on Prosper Week. So what do you, what do you want to teach? What do you want to, during Prosper Week, Hashtag Prosper Week. What do you want to be teaching a class on? So I guess LaVonna is sharing something with us. And I'm assuming it's in reference to women. And I'm going to give her a couple seconds to kind of put some things in there. Okay, while she's doing that. So next week when I do my live, I'm going to say, hey, did any of y'all have a random conversation with some of your friends or whoever uh, below the skirt? I want to see what your response is. So that's your homework for this week. Let me know um, how it goes. I'm trying to give LaVonda a couple minutes to kind of answer the question in reference to Prosper Week in the spring. So. Doo -doo -doo -doo. But yeah, so definitely want to challenge y'all to it. Not to be on repeat because I feel like I'm repeating myself. So it's kind of time to shut it down. So tr challenge yourself. What are the different four things um, different ways that you can engage a conversation, stir it up. If you, um, I, 
I want you to teach it. Oh, <laughs> okay. Um, yes, I would love. Yes, I would love to teach it. Question, can I bring Virginia? And with bringing Virginia, wherever I go, Virginia goes. Also, hopefully they're ready to handle it because I'm going to bring it. I'm definitely going to bring it. So, um I just booked myself for something during Prosper Week in the spring. So I'll definitely let you ladies know. You're the first for me to let you know about things that are going on. I'm doing a live. I'm almost done. Um, so and then also, too, I also want to let you guys know um, I, I will be launching a course next week on leaky faucets. Um, so I will be doing a live webinar. And as soon as the marketing team kind of pulls everything in, I will definitely drop it in this group so i'm definitely again i know some of you don't feel comfortable dropping questions out loud in here in this group um, like i said these are very intimate conversations that we do have but i want to meet you where you are oh virginia is always welcome thank you me and virginia um but i want to uh, meet you where you are or if it, it may be someone you may know who's dealing with it and they're so embarrassed. They are so embarrassed. I had a woman, she just didn't want to travel that far. She couldn't travel over 30 minutes because she wouldn't make it to the office. So we had to restructure something for her so she could be able to get to me. And then from there, be able to work on her course of action. So I will be launching a course next week. It will be going live, and I'm officially letting you guys know next week, Thursday, September the 17th. And this is specifically for, it doesn't have to be someone, my license can only cover South Carolina. This is for anybody outside of South Carolina. This can be, is nationally meeting you where you are if you're having issues with leaky faucets. And it's a it's an online therapy course. And if you look at the course, it is just like me literally speaking to you. I'm giving you everything I would with someone in my office. You have homework, you know, it's, it's definitely, and you'll get the results you're looking for within 30 days. You will definitely have a, um, a functional change of life within 30 days. Um, I can see it even with my clients after they come for two or three visits, they've already definitely noticed a significant change almost to the point that they're not really having any issues. So wanted to drop that gem out there. You're the first to know and share with other the women so they can be on the lookout as well for this course that I will be having. So I went way beyond my time. I enjoy being with you ladies as always. I look forward to every Tuesday. Again, if there's anything you want to talk about, you're in the below the skirt group. Don't be fearful. Don't be shy. If you don't feel comfortable, share it with me. You know, I'm not shy about speaking on this in this group. I don't do it all over the place, but it's this a time. There's a time and a place for everything. And this group is the place and this group is the time. So look forward to seeing you guys next, you ladies next week, Tuesday at eight, same time, same place. Be there or be square. Have a good evening.